So one of our favorite parts about working at Audioholics is the opportunity to get hands-on with new technology as it emerges. Today, we're fortunate enough to be among the very first press that are going to get ears on with the DTS-X format. This, like Dolby Atmos and RO3D, is sound that is not only all around you to the sides, the front, behind, but also above you. True, immersive surround sound technology. We haven't heard it yet, but join us on the flight as we take a listen. All right, so for this review, we're gonna do three things for you. Number one, we're gonna describe the four aspects of DTS-X as we currently understand them. The second thing we're gonna do is take you through the experience we had at the DTS headquarters for the demo, including some listing notes. And the third thing we're gonna do is talk about the implications for DTS-X in the home environment. So, first things first, the four aspects of DTS-X. Um, first, you have the production environment. So the production environment includes dts MDA, that stands for multi-dimensional audio. It's the tool the actual content producers use to make the multi-dimensional or object-oriented mix. So we'll give you a little example of that essentially you have this circular area. At the uh, top of the circle is your center speaker. As you go to the bottom of the circle, that's when you get to your rear speakers and it's around the side, obviously. On the outside of the circle, so when you're around the outside periphery, that is ear level. As you move inward into the middle of the circle, then you are moving the sound overhead. So it's a very quick and easy thing to click and drag sound through here. Um, what's nice about this for producers is not only the ease of use of the tool, but also the tool itself is royalty free, license free. Uh, there's some confusion about it being labeled open source. It is not open source. The program itself is property of DTX. However, um, the tool itself is free for use and the generated file that's output is not locked down in any way. So you can mix in MDA and then take the resulting file and use it in a wide variety of tools. It's not bound to only DTS software. So big advantage there for why we'll probably see more content coming out is number one, price, and number two, the fact that the resulting file is open and therefore flexible in what people do with it after the fact. So that's the production environment. Obviously content needs to happen before we can see how this is going to work in the cinema and home environments. Speaking of the cinema environment though, moving on to DTS-X in the cinema, uh, it is scalable to almost any cinema speaker configuration. So while they certainly have recommendations for the cinemas and they want to work with them on integration, uh, it sounds like if a cinema has already got speakers set up for Dolby Atmos, they can also use that same speaker configuration for DTS-X. So one of the big takeaways here is the flexibility of DTS-X. The fact that it's not bound by a specific speaker configuration but can be mapped to a wide variety of configurations. So DTS-X in the cinema, um, they are announcing partnerships with IMAX the uh, remember MDA, the production software suite, that's going to be used to mix the sound for a little movie called Avengers Age of Ultron. I don't know about you, I'm excited for Avengers, the new Avengers movie, and it's going to be mixed with DTS, and that same mix is going to be used in the cinemas, especially the IMAX cinemas, to show off the object-oriented multi-dimensional audio. Okay, so that gets it into the cinema. The question is then, how do we get it into the home? What's nice about DTSX is because it's scalable to a wide variety of speaker environments. It's, it's totally flexible. You can take the same mix, the very same mix that goes into the cinema, and easily move it into the home environment, regardless of what that environment is. So if you have 11 speakers in your home, front, back, sides, overhead, great. One soundtrack will scale to that configuration. If you only have a standard 5.1 system, great, that same soundtrack scales to your 5.1. If you're using the two speakers or one speaker that might be built into a flat screen television, as long as that flat screen television can decode DTS-X or DTS Master Audio, it's backwards compatible, 
backwards compatible to DTS master audio equipment, that same soundtrack can scale to those smaller speaker environments. So this goes both to production and to cinema and to the home environment. One mix goes to all the environments. One single soundtrack on a disc can play back in a, multi in, in a multitude of systems. Very flexible, very scalable. And now, what if we take that down to the fourth level? The fourth level being personal audio. Specifically, DTSX headphone, excuse me, DTS headphone X. I get those backwards all the time. So DTS headphone X can be experienced now through any standard set of headphones. In fact, if you go on to the, uh, the website for DTS headphone X, uh, you'll see a number of, uh, of, of clips and also some apps that you can download for your phone to try this out. We'll talk about a little more about that as we talk about the listening notes. So now you can take that same multi-dimensional soundtrack, you can put on headphones, and you can simulate a surround environment including height channels using just two channels of audio, one in your left ear, one in your right ear. Those are the four aspects of DTSX. You've got the production environment, cinema environment, home environment, and personal environment through headphones. So what did this look like on demo day? Well, let me take you through the paces. First off, after we got a little bit of sleep, we woke up the next morning and headed over to the DTS headquarters in California. Calabasas, I believe is how the town's pronounced. I might be messing that up. It's just outside of LA. Part of me would like to believe that the experience I had walking into DTS is the same experience that all DTS employees have going to work every single day. Uh, there was food all the way around, there were giveaways, uh, a DJ spinning music live in the lobby and later on in a, in a small game room theater space. All the games are free. You want to play some stand-up arcade games, uh, check out a video game, uh, play some movies on the big system. It looks like you can just pop down and do that at any point. I, I don't know about you, uh, I'm sure that I wouldn't get much work done in that environment, but they seem to manage just fine. So they really have hit the, the ground hard on DTSX. All the branding in the building was featuring the X variant of DTSX. I didn't see DTS Master Audio anywhere. Once again, DTSX backwards compatible with Master Audio. We are going to see DTSX probably being the major primary logo on everything related to DTS going forward. There was some talk that they may keep the DTS Master Audio logo to signify that what you're getting is high resolution lossless sound because DTSX can be compressed into a lossy format for delivery not only on lossless Blu-ray but also lossy streaming titles things through YouTube or Netflix or Hulu or whoever signs on with them so once again very scalable but we may still see that DTS master audio to signify lossless high resolution audio Okay, so we walk into the main foyer, um, they give us little tokens to signify which of the listening groups we're going to be in, and they did demo listening in the second floor main room for four people at a time. So the main room was, I didn't get the exact dimensions, uh, the demo was really on rails, we didn't have a lot of time to make requests for content or to uh, examine the room because they had to get these groups through uh, back to back real quickly. But what we saw was in a room uh, approximately, uh, I'm going to say it's about 40 feet long by 20 feet wide, something along those lines, uh, uh, two main systems. First, on the exterior wall in this very large room, it's not exactly cinema size, but it's much bigger than most home environments, any home I've been in, uh, we saw speakers all over the place, above and below the screen, left and right, pairs all the way around. This is a test lab. So they have all these speakers set up. I think they, uh, there was several dozen speakers in this room. And then they call them up in any potential configuration to test out how these might sound on different sound systems. There was also an inner ring of speakers. So speakers closer to the listening area. And that included overhead speakers. They were hung on a circular ring overhead. Um, these, it's a little tough to get shots because the room was very dim, but I'll, I'll put some video up to it so you can take a look at it. Uh, these closer speakers were meant to simulate the environment of a smaller room. So while the room itself didn't shrink, the distance of the speakers from the listeners shrank a little bit. And so in this lab environment, they can test both a cinema style reproduction and a home style reproduction. So we were taken through a number of clips showcasing uh, DTSX clips. One of the, the clips in particular showcased it. It was a couple frogs and there was this fly that spins around the room. So you hear this buzzing fly and it spins around in front of you, behind you, overhead. Some fairly gratuitous pans, but something that will really show off the capability of DTSX. So again, with the automation.
from that listening experience, what I would say is there's no question that with a good system over speakers overhead and all around you, you can position a sound relative to the listener almost anywhere. It was very convincing when that fly was supposed to be going around the back and over the head. Smooth pans, no big gaps that I heard where the fly seemed to jump from one speaker to the other. So there's no question that in terms of the system, the system is capable of doing true immersive sound. Now it all comes down to a good mix. As the DTS folks are quick to point out, there's no stopping a bad mix. So the intention of the sound mixer can go awry, but the system itself is able to produce that content. So once we got a little experience in this room, we were also able to try out DTS X, excuse me, DTS Headphone X. There I go again, flipping it around. DTS Headphone X. They had us listen to your standard channel check, left channel, center channel, right channel, through the main speakers, actual physical speakers. Then they had us put on the headphones and do that same listening test. Now it sounded to me like the sound was coming from speakers in the room, so much so that about halfway through the test, I think I made it through three speakers, I pulled the headphones off my head and I say, this can't be right, they must have accidentally left the speakers on. That was not the case. Very convincing placement from DTS Headphone X. And you can try this yourself by trying out the DTS Headphone X apps that are out there and they all have sound checks in there. I will say the positioning wasn't entirely spot on, it wasn't entirely convincing. So in other words, it wasn't as good as having hundreds of thousands of dollars of equipment around you in this massive room that doesn't exist in most of our homes. However, it was way better than I expected headphones would sound and that's where my sense of disbelief about DTS Headphone X came from. So once we moved from the second floor big room, we were able to get a little bit more time in a smaller demo room. The smaller demo room was about 25 feet by uh, 25 feet long, 18 feet wide, about 10 foot ceilings. Uh, here again, we had speakers in more of a, of a home configuration in front to the sides behind and then also a ring of speakers overhead. It was a seven point well, 7.1.4. There were multiple subwoofers, two subwoofers at least that I saw, but seven main speakers, uh, three across the front, two sides, two rears four overhead speakers, two up front, two in the rear, so 7.1.4. In that, we were given a little more of a, of a freedom to select which clips we wanted to hear and in which order. So I started off by doing a, um, a, an examination of how DTSX matrixes, or, or I, I figure what they call it, maybe um, remaps, I think is what they call it, upscales in a way of thinking, a standard seven point or five point content to this now overhead speaker arrangement. So they do have their special sauce. They have the special sauce that'll take a, a two channel stereo signal or a five channel mix and blow it up into this 11 channel including overhead system. So I got to hear the same content mixed for a standard seven channel system as well as a 7.x.4 system with the overheads. Between the two what I would say is that it's very content dependent. So, hearing the upscaling, I got a sense of a, of a larger sound stage and a little bit of a lift overall in where the sound was coming from with the overhead speakers on as well. Now, when they moved over to the one that was mixed for overhead speakers, it was a different beast entirely because they were really isolating elements. It was a musical track. They were isolating elements of the musical track to appear overhead. They were supposed to be very distinct and sound like they were uh, discrete speakers from overhead. So it wasn't a general sense of a larger sound stage. It was discrete elements. It was a little, and this is where we talk about the gratuitous pans and the bad mixes. For me, personally, I didn't care for it. And I know somewhere whoever mixed these tracks is saying, what does this Yahoo on, on uh, Audioholics know about mixing? I'm the professional mixer. I get where you're coming from, dude. And I get that these were designed to really showcase what DTX is, uh, is capable of. But when I'm listening to a band and I hear literally background vocals over my head and bouncing around up here, that's not music in a realism term. Another example, they have a great drum, uh, a, 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 a brief drum clip on there, and I'll have to find the name of Jojo somebody. I'll put it up down here. Um, Jojo somebody, uh, amazing drummer. But what they did is they mixed it so that your head sounded like it was in the middle of the drum kit. So up front you had your toms and a snare, and then you had the hi-hat over your right, uh, your, your right shoulder and some stuff that was happening overhead. So it was like you were physically in the middle of the drum set. Was it interesting? Yes. 
Is it how I want to listen to music? No, not necessarily. What I'm hoping to get out of this immersive sound is a sense of transporting to another environment. So if I'm watching a movie and they go from a train station to an open field to being buried alive in a coffin, I want to get a sense that I'm in that train station. I hear the ambiance. I hear the reflection of the sound that makes me believe I'm sitting in a train station. And then I'm sitting in an open field where there aren't a lot of reflections, but maybe there's a lot of insect noises, birds chirping from all around me, including overhead. And then I want to get this sense of being in that closed environment, sort of those really dulled down short reverbs that make me think the space is closing in around me when I'm buried alive in that coffin. That's what immersive audio can do. It can also make these crazy ostentatious mixes. But instead, what I'm listening for is more of a sense of being surrounded by reality. And so, um, although I wasn't able to get any demo equipment there, the demo clips to be able to play something like that, I think that that potential is no doubt definitely there. Uh, brief caveat, uh, they, they were not able to play stuff that I brought with me. So I brought some music um, that was mixed in a 2.0. They were not or were not willing to play that equipment on that day. They were here to show off something specific, and I respect that. But I think that for most of us, one of the big questions we have is what will this do with music? And a lot of times we're talking about music that's mixed for two channels. The answer is, I don't know yet. I imagine a lot of it will be dependent on what the user wants. There'll be multiple modes that you can select. But right now, I can't tell you how that sounds. Okay, and so um, that was pretty much the experience at DTS. Like I said, I've got a couple shots of that. We'll put some video up. I want to spend a little bit of time now, and I know this can't be a fully comprehensive review, but I want to spend a little bit of time talking about some frequently asked questions. So one of the big questions that people ask is, what do I need to get DTSX in my home? Am I going to have to buy a new receiver? Am I going to have to buy new speakers? Am I going to have to buy a Blu-ray player? The answer is yes to some of those. So for starters, DTS is ready to roll. Their content and their hardware manufacturers are coming. We got a press release with a list of various content, uh, excuse me, various uh, hardware manufacturers. You've got big names in there. Trinov is, uh, is, uh, is the equipment that was used during the listening test. So uh, Trinov's equipment is already ready, at least for DTS, and it should be ready for the consumers very soon. Denon, Outlaw, Yamaha, all those have been announced and more. We'll put the full list up in the article. However, None of those can you go out and buy today. So that's the first thing that's holding you back. The second thing is you do need speakers up above. I cannot stress this point enough though. The placement flexibility of DTS-X was talked about over and over again. So when you look at something like Dolby Atmos, Dolby either gives you very specific requirements, degrees of overhead uh, relative to the listener where the speakers have to go, or on the other end of the spectrum, they give you the reflective speakers. They say, hey, just bounce the, the sound off the ceiling. It'll sound good enough. So there's this weird spectrum from very strict to very loose that exists for Dolby Atmos. There is no such speaker configuration for DTSX. We pushed them, and they were very reluctant to, to talk about any required configuration of speakers because they can remap the speakers to the room. They, or, or a better way of looking at it, they can remap the sound to the speakers in the room. Okay, so now that you've got that concept that you can basically put your speakers anywhere, and as long as the hardware manufacturers support it, DTSX can scale to your speakers. The question is, without a recommended configuration, what would it look like? And I really pushed them on that, and finally they let us know that if you start with a standard 7.1 configuration, where you have both sides and back speakers, and you were to add a couple overhead speakers, that could be one in the front, one in the back, two in the front, two in the back, two up front, Wherever it works with your room, they will scale the sound to give you the best imaging possible in your system. And I see a real potential benefit here is that if DTS really can scale sound to any configuration, think about all those folks. You go to visit them, and they've got the surround system, but their surrounds are in the wrong place. For me personally, you know how serious I take my sound, but the way my house is configured, configured my speakers are too high in the surrounds. They're way overhead with where they should be. DTSX could actually scale the sound to give me more accurate sound given the placement of my surround speakers. How many folks have you seen that they can only play speakers uh, maybe too wide or too narrow up front because of, of uh, room openings or because they've got furniture where it just doesn't work? DTSX could actually scale sound that's in this non standard configuration of speakers. So, this is a huge benefit in my opinion, if implemented by the hardware manufacturers, 
for people that don't even have overhead speakers, but just have less than ideal placement of their speakers in their room, which frankly, in a, in a domestic home, is almost every single person. So huge benefit there. Another thing on the hardware side, will you need a new Blu-ray player? No, absolutely not. They said flat out, you will not need a new Blu-ray player. If it can pass DTS uh, audio now, it'll be able to pass it down the road. Okay, so that was one big question. Other questions, will this work with reflecting speakers? Um, they were a little fuzzy on that. They didn't want to really comment on somebody else's product. They will say that they do not want to encourage reflecting speakers. They encourage you instead to put your speakers where you can, let DTS know where the actual speakers are, and then they will map to those speakers. So they are not recommending reflected speakers. Uh, let me take a look at my list and see what else I have here. Um, are there, are, will it be possible for Dolby Atmos and DTS to coexist, and RO3D to coexist? The answer between Dolby and RO3D right now looks like no. They can't coexist unless you actually put speakers up for both of those configurations. The placement of the speakers is not uh, congruent between Dolby Atmos and RO3D. However, DTS could work with either or both of those setups. Once again, wherever your speakers are, DTS, as implemented by the hardware manufacturer, can map that to your room. So right now, the same speaker configuration is used for the standard flavor of DTS or DTS Master Audio as well as Dolby True HD. DTS and Dolby True HD coexist. You don't have to think about it. You put in a Blu-ray disc, you fire up your content, and it just goes to the right speakers. That same paradigm can exist if DTSX is implemented alongside either Dolby Atmos or RO3D. Okay, what else do we have? Uh, what movie studios are out there? They did not talk a lot about content. Uh, they didn't want to get specific. There are quite a few people that are mixing content for DTSX, they said. They just couldn't name anything beyond the Avengers movie and the partnership. Now, Carmike Cinemas, on top of some other partners that were listed in the, in the, um, in the press release, Car Carmike Cinemas, which is one of the biggest cinema chains in the U.S., is going to be building DTSX-ready cinema rooms. This is big. DTS hasn't always been in the cinema space. They were there with uh, Jurassic Park, but then they kind of conceived a lot of that to some other folks. They're getting back into cinemas. So you're going to see DTS branding in cinemas again, starting with Carmike and others. Beyond that, they did not want to talk too much about content, except to say that they are fairly certain that you're going to be seeing some consumer content out there by the end of the year with the new announcements from the hardware manufacturers, presumably towards uh, later on this year and then also into CES next year. Okay, will DTS play a role in music too? I talked about this a little bit. Music, two-channel music, will be scaled up to your system. Whether you have two speakers, five speakers, ten speakers, eleven speakers, DTS is going to put their special sauce on it, and it'll be scaled to however many speakers you have. Now, two-channel purists out there may or may not like the special sauce that DTS puts on there. One thing of note, they in the past have had a DTS movie and a DTS music uh, scaling or a uh, mode, let's say. Going forward, they said they're going to get away from the multimodal way of approaching different types of content. When content is scaled up, it's going to be scaled up the same, irrespective of whether it's movie content or music or news or sports or that. So your content, you're not going to be able to switch between whether you want it to sound like you're in a concert hall or whether you want it to sound like you're in a public restroom in Vienna. There's none of that nonsense going on with DTS. They're going to do one upscaling, remapping, whatever you want to call it, for all your content, whether it's movies or music. Are there any currently upgradable receivers? We know that is true. Um, there's, a, there's an upgrade coming for Denon and Marantz, as well as probably some others that I'm forgetting. Now, I believe those are hardware upgrades. It does not sound like it's going to be a software upgrade, and they didn't mention anything about a software upgrade, so we're going to have to wait and see about that. Okay, the last question that I'll answer is kind of a big one. We've talked a lot about how DTS is going to map their speakers to your room. The question is, how? How is it that they're going to know where your speakers are located? They were not able to give us an answer on that except to say that they've made several recommendations to their hardware partners, but at the end of the day, it's all going to be left up to the people manufacturing the hardware. It is still incumbent upon Denon and Onkyo and Marantz and Trinov and Yamaha and Outlaw and everybody else that's involved in this thing. 
it is still incumbent upon them to make a good user setup experience. You're not just going to be able to throw up a single microphone on the microphone to be able to detect where your speakers are located. That microphone will tell you distance, it'll tell you the correct crossover frequency for those speakers, but in terms of where they're placed in the room, they're going to have to come up with a different system of some kind. So whether that's simply the user saying, uh, identifying a, a speaker channel and saying, yeah, that's generally my front left overhead speaker or my rear right side surround speaker, uh, whether it's, it's somebody saying that or whether they're actually identifying this particular speaker is, is 10 degrees uh, 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 horizontal and 40 degrees vertical, uh, you're going to get a laser pointer out, you're going to get the math out, I don't know. Um, I'd like to see both approaches, quite frankly. I know that we here in America are not so great with math. We've all got calculators built into our cell phones. Uh, it, we, we've grown up in an age where we haven't had to take a pencil and paper out very often. I would like to see both systems implemented. I'd like to be able to have kind of an easy user setup to say that generally I'm going to identify this speaker as a front speaker or a height speaker. And then I would also like to see a more let's call it a professional level setup, although I would like to see this available to consumers as well, to be able to say specifically, this particular speaker is however many degrees off of horizontal, however many degrees vertical, and then let the distance be determined by the microphone. When you think about it, if you identify the degrees horizontal and vertical, you could do that with a, with a, with a laser pointer on, you know, like a, like a, what they, what they call those uh, sextants, I think the old pirates used to use to judge the North Star. You could hook up a little laser pointer system like that. Once you've got your horizontal and your vertical and your microphone determines your distance, you now have very accurately mapped the speaker environment, the room environment then you're, that you're in. And so it doesn't get any better than that, in my opinion. So that's pretty much it. I really want to thank you, the viewers, for tuning in virtually as you joined us along our trip to the DTS headquarters. I want to thank everybody at DTS for showing us a great time and being as forthcoming as they can be, understanding there's still a lot of stuff in the works about what the future of DTS looks like with regards to DTSX. And um, I want to thank especially uh, Evan, uh, who, who got us there and, uh, and was very accommodating and um, we're very excited about all immersive technology. How at Audioholics can we not be excited about getting a more realistic film environment in our living rooms, in our headphones, in our theaters? We're very excited about that, but we're even more excited when it's, it's adaptable to a consumer space that makes sense, that it works in our homes. And I think that's my biggest takeaway from the DTSX announcement. This is a space, this is, excuse me, a technology that is meant to work in real spaces. You will not have to tear down walls. You will not have to put up 40 speakers. You take your space, you figure out a configuration that makes sense for you, and then DTS is going to be flexible. They're not asking you to be flexible. They're going to be flexible with their system. So there's a huge amount of promise here on every level. We're very excited to see what's going to happen. It's just a matter of waiting and seeing what comes out. You'll get updates from us as that new info comes out. Stay tuned to Audioholics. Subscribe to our YouTube page. Uh, make sure you visit the website. Like us on Facebook. Do all of that so that you won't miss a single moment of this new technology emerging in the home, in the cinemas, over your headphones. Thanks a lot.